It's me, Fabian. I'm the creator of Reflection of a Reflection of a Reflection. I'm a cinematographer and animator. And now we're going to dive deep in how I created this. Let's go. Experimenting with a medium. Text to image models are pretty harsh to use for video because there's something called frame consistency, which is not very consistent. Basically, using stable diffusion for video makes it very hard because one frame will never be the same as the other frame if there's a lot of movement in there. In my early experiments, I tried to take this limitation and sort of own it and not try to hide it, but instead kind of highlighted it. So I tried different ways to sort of trigger stable diffusion to give me what I wanted to have in a composition. For example, I used photographs I took from the internet and placed them in my animation instead of creating my own materials and my own models. In this way, having the original photograph would help me trigger stable diffusion to get me, for example, a very nice pot. Mwah. The colors and the materials I used in my 3D animation are also pretty basic. As you can see, the characters are very defined shapes. A very round, a very tall one, and just one color defining each character. That really helped Stable Diffusion to understand who is the character and who is the background. A very small detail that made the whole animation a lot better was that the scenes where there's no movement at all, um, well, I would get a very static image out of it. And that doesn't make the scene look very lively, it just looks like an image. So I had this very small layer of noise that for the human eye, unperceivable. But for the AI, just enough to get that small triggering to get those little flickers in the background. The models, or the characters? For the characters, it was a bit of a challenge to get a character design that would fit the way Stable Diffusion interprets images the best. I didn't use a normal Stable Diffusion model in itself, but I fine-tuned it with other data. So basically I had Stable Diffusion version 1.5, which already knows everything on how to generate stuff, but of course it did not know my new characters. So what I needed to create is a lot of data of my new characters and sort of make it learn to this little Stable Diffusion model. So at first I did a lot of experiment with Baluigi, the original one. I had a sample of, let's say, 30 images of Baluigi, the iconic one. I trained the stable diffusion model on that, and what I got was a very iconic Baluigi, which was very nice. But it did not have a stylistic flexibility. I wanted it to have in the style of not what the usual Baluigi style, and I just couldn't get it because, well, stable diffusion just knew that. Enter fan art. I tried the same thing, but this time I only used fan art. In this way, I had Baluigi in very different styles, but always Baluigi. You always have the hat, you always have the nose, the mustache, the legs. And what I found out is that that model was keeping the visual identity consistent while allowing me to be stylistically flexible. And that's what I wanted to have. In that way, I personally can be more free the moment I make the film uh, to really choose the style I want that frame to be in. After my own character design process, what I did is ask many of my friends to create fan art of my characters. I got 34 images per character. This allowed me to have four different models, one for each character, that would be able to replicate my characters. The video making process. My approach for the actual video was pretty much like I would make my other animations. I would create my 3D models in Cinema 4D, I would animate them, create a background, movement of camera, you know, the usual stuff. But this time, I kind of also needed to think how the frame would be then interpreted by Stable Diffusion. 
So at first it was a little bit of a back and forth communication between mindframes, what I would create and what Civil Diffusion would then create out of that. So sometimes I would understand, okay, this triggers Civil Diffusion to create this, so maybe the composition should be a little bit different. Or maybe this part of the background just mixes up with the characters and therefore I need to remove that. Another very harsh part of the process was finding the right seat. So a seat in Stable Diffusion sort of signifies the noise with which it starts to generate the image. So if I would prompt it with the same seat, it would always get me the same image, and if I would get a different seat, it would give me a, a little bit different looking image. So it was a lot about trying a lot of different seats for every scene. Every scene has different seats. In a way, it is a very dangerous workflow because you could get stuck hours and hours in trying one seed after the other and one prompt after the other without getting to the end. Conclusion? There's a big narrative in the AI and film scene in which people try to see generative AI to be something to automate your workflow and to be something that makes your workflow a lot faster so that you can make more movies. For my personal experience, that was the opposite because trying to find the right way to trigger stable diffusion and the right techniques of animation to use that would best fit the way stable diffusion interprets my images, that just took a lot of time. Something that feels very easy to do with AI is to uh, just let it automate the whole process. That doesn't mean those videos and those films are bad. It's actually very nice if there's a story that actually makes it very meaningful. But personally, I feel that intentionality is still very important and the sort of idea of the human is what makes a story compelling. Since I'm very fond of using stable diffusion or other generative models into the workflow of video making, I decided to open source the models I used for my animation, the frames I used into the image to image, and all of the prompts and parameters. So if you click the link down below, you can go download them and use them yourself. This doesn't mean that you can impersonate me, but maybe I feel like you could get inspired to see what was the behind the scenes of all of it. You could go on and create your films with a few prompts and that's it, but I feel like doing this, having this sort of craft while putting all of this stuff together is so interesting and so nice, so why not just share it with everyone? I hope you enjoyed my film, my behind the scenes video, and have a good watch. Ciao, ciao!